standing to see the right place from Lord Mayor of Liverpool and some Chris Bay Banks. for absence have been received from councillors Dan Barrington, Harry Doyle, Patrick Hurley, Myrna Juarez, Peter Mitchell, Steve Mumby, Lana Orth, Liz Parsons, Rose Gladden, Peter Clark, Sue Walker, Cheryl Didsbury, Anna Robbery, Gary Miller and Carol Storey. Are there any further uh, apologies? Okay. As all members are aware, there are three meetings taking place this evening. I would like to emphasise that these are key meetings, and I therefore request that everyone present, including the public, treat these meetings accordingly, which will enable the business to be dealt with effectively. The use of social media and film for recording procedure is permissive during the council meeting. This does not extend to film of the members of the public and anyone wishing to film the proceedings are also particularly directed to the very sensitive issue of filming children without the express permission of their parents. And I remind members of the council regarding elected members tweeting using social media. If you are using your tablets to follow the agenda, that is fine. But if you wish to tweet or record, record proceedings, please go to the back of the chamber as not, so as not to dis uh, disrupt any other speaker. speaker. Uh, we have students from Jeremy University. Yes, you're most welcome. And you're most welcome to stay till the end. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want. And the Lord will buy your drink. Yes, yes. And I've got this piece of card. Okay. Thank you. Um, Chief Executive. On declarations of interest, Lord Mayor, can I remind members that you are only required to declare at meetings any disclosable pecuniary or preferential interests, in which case the member will, will need to leave the chamber during the consideration of the item. Okay. Freedom Row of Association, Mayor Anderson. Are there any such declarations? Are there any such declarations? Freedom of the Row of Association, Mayor Anderson. Little bit, can I uh, move that in pursuance of section 249 of the Local Public Act 1972, that the only freedom of the city be confirmed Confer onto royalty office. Seconded. Is that agreed? <coughs> Freedom. Freedom of the city, Mayor Anderson. Hello, Mayor. Again, can I move and pursue to section 249 of the Local Government Act 1972? That the honorary freedom of the city be conferred on John Hood Cockholt uh, from Royal Deluxe. Just uh, to say, Lord Mayor, very, very quickly, that I have an opportunity 
talk about uh, at the event, but I think I was overwhelmed with the number of people from the city and on beyond who were asking us to recognise John Luke's contribution uh, to the city in terms of arts, culture and events over the last three occasions, the 2012, 2014, 2018, when really did us visit to the city. It overwhelmed us the number of people that have contacted us. So I think we responded to the people's uh, feelings and the people's call to be given this award. Thank you. Second, Lord Mayor. Could you please just name and if you want to speak on this, anybody? No, thank you. We now go to the order of the meeting. Chief Executive. To advise members that apologies for absence have been received from Councillors Dan Barrington, Harry Doyle, Patrick Curley, Myrna Juarez, Peter Mitchell, Steve Mumby, Lana Orr, Liz Parsons. Ros Gladden, Peter Clark, Sue Walker, Cheryl Didsbury, Anna Rothery, Gary Miller, and Carol Story. Are there any further apologies to report? No. Okay. Declarations of interest, Chief Minister. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can I remind members that you are only required to declare at meetings any disclosable, pecuniary, or prejudicial interests? In which case the member will need to leave the chamber during the consideration of the item. Are there any such declarations? Yes, yeah, in uh, relation to item 14, due to a budget. Anybody else? Are well, the minutes of the City Council meeting held on the 19th of September? Have been read or been agreed? Tell you, 
hand on heart, that never once in all those 43 years did I personally ever experience any semblance of anti-Semitism. But that's Liverpool, multicultural, multi-faith. But then again, things are changing. Your motion today, which has been accepted by the council, is very, very welcome by the community I represent. Um, there's always been a very strong relationship between this council and the Jewish community. One might say a reciprocal relationship. Over many years, our community has been closely involved with the council. How closely? Well, in my time alone, there have been eight Jewish Lord Mayors, three Jewish council leaders, and dozens of Jewish councillors. On behalf of my chairman, Michelle Haywood, who has joined me here today, and my executive, could I say on behalf of the community, I will continue, I, I'm sorry, I, will, I can't read my own writing sometimes, and yet I'm not used to the speeches you see, it's I will, strange experience for me this. I will conclude by thanking you for your continued support and to reaffirm our strong allegiance with the Council. Thank you all for the way in which, which you've received this. Thank you very much.
uh, one-stop shops, our libraries, our children's centres, and every council building is available and open to receive donations of, of food uh, into uh, those particular premises and facilities. Quite often you get people who can't make the journey or won't make the journey on a bus or whatever to take cans of food, but if they know that the library is around the corner or the children's centre or uh, the uh, drop-in centre or whatever it is that we have, they can drop that off uh, at that particular facility or one-stop shop. So everywhere we'll be getting asked to uh, receive uh, goods uh, and hopefully that will help us uh, support people more during what is going to be a very difficult time. A couple of things though, Lord Mayor, and it's important I think that councillors know about it because it's clearly going to help them support people in their own uh, community and it shows that where we can, we clearly want to try and make a difference to help uh, people. So we're setting aside and putting £50,000 uh, into the Mayor's Hope Fund uh, and that will be delivered in a number of ways. I've met with um, some of the people that run uh, football uh, field banks in Bain and David Kelly today uh, to talk about what we can do leading up to Christmas but also what we can do immediately after uh, Christmas. So through the Hope Fund uh, we'll be uh, working with the football fans supporting food banks and the Trust and Trust to do exactly what we did last year that was providing uh, meat uh, and vegetable vouchers so that can help people uh, buy some fresh produce for Christmas. So we gave out uh, £20 vouchers uh, last year uh, to over 300 families and that again will be made available uh, to food banks and to people who want to uh, give them out to people that use their food banks. Also we are providing support with uh, fuel vouchers through uh, the Lenny Company is, is actually now in profit uh, and making a profit and that's going into the Hope Fund. So uh, last year we supported care leavers with £20 with a few vouchers. Um, not a great deal, but you know, we, it's, it's about all we could afford. But this year we're going to increase that to £30. We're also going to be working with our food banks and citizens advice and our own at Ward Council, as you yourselves, to work with people who are in receipt of housing benefits and council tax support, uh, where we will offer those uh, families affected uh, by UK, but also those that have uh, looked after children under one. Again, we'll be offering fuel, uh, fuel vouchers as well as food vouchers, £20 fuel vouchers to about 900 families affected by fuel poverty over. Uh, the Christmas period. Of course, we recognise as well that January, February, and March will be extremely difficult for people. Um, and again, we're going to be extending the period where we offer winter fuel vouchers uh, right across that particular period as well. Uh, and we'll be supporting around about uh, 500 families. I think I've mentioned uh, on numerous occasions how difficult life is for people uh, who are on benefits but also uh, those that are in working on benefits and so all I would say is uh, to councillors or to organisations, to the policy sector, to businesses, if you can support us not only uh, helping us provide um, what is going to be a huge peak as people transfer to universal credit, it's going to be a huge peak a five week, six week period where people will not have any money or any income coming in and they are going to be struggling. So if you know them, refer them uh, to the food banks, but we refer them to ourselves, to our citizen support scheme and we'll help them in, in any way uh, that we can. Um, just a couple of um, positive announcements uh, and not so positive. It was absolutely discussed that it was discussed at our group on on Sunday how uh, our remembrance service um, was disrupted not intentionally by football fans coming into the station um, while we were holding our remembrance, uh, our remembrance service uh, and they were ha had to be taken out another way as we were respected those that lost their lives during the First World War. 
And the fact of the matter is, is that the BBC, and, and uh, in particular BT, have no respect or consideration uh, for us. And whilst our service was still going on, and people were laying reeds, the kick-off had already gone, the whistleblower at Anfield and football was being played. We could no longer accept that to happen in this city. And I'll be saying to the chief executives of both football clubs, that we won't tolerate that happening in our city again and I've written or a right into the Premier League to make that, that same point. Um, a couple of other things on a, a positive note, it was great to see that we won the Special Olympic Games in, in 2021. Uh, thank you to Ron, uh, Ron and I and his team. Uh, we put in a, a tremendous bid and we look forward to hosting uh, the Games in, in 2021. Um, uh, also, uh, today, uh, I want to inform um, Council that three weeks ago I wrote to Kingdom, um, our, our company that's a partner with us in terms of looking after uh, uh, street scene, in terms of collect, um, uh, looking after listening in the streets of, of the city to terminate the contract uh, with, um, with Kingdom. So we will, of course, not let up on challenging people who, um, in my view, uh, demean our city by dumping litter uh, and dropping litter, including cigarette butts. So we will work with uh, Tidy Britain to promote uh, things in our city that we actually uh, keep our city as clean and pristine uh, as, as possible. Also, um, I mentioned about the, uh, the Liverpool Levy Company uh, being a success because we are now um, in profit. So I would urge people to actually remind people uh, in, in their wards uh, and where they live and the neighbours and friends to actually join up to um, the Lecky Company because not only will it save uh, money but it will also uh, provide extra resources for us to use to help support the most uh, vulnerable in the city. That's more or less um, all from updates from me, uh, Lord Mayor, and we're happy to uh, answer any questions. Are there any questions to Mayor Anderson? Uh, two, two points, uh, Lord Mayor, and they're both to congratulate the Mayor on the moves that he's made. Uh, I very much support the letter going to the Premier League. It is absolutely right that when this nation stands still, just for that brief period, everyone should stand still, and we should arrange our Sundays around that, our, our remembrance Sundays. So I really support what he's done. Uh, can I just ask though a question on the Kingdom contract, which I find more surprising, because when we suggested something similar at the last council meeting, as we'll see on page 13, a very lengthy motion, uh, amendment moved by Councillor Parson, seconded by Jim Corbett, that actually blocked what we suggested, which wasn't quite getting rid of Kingdom, because we're not in a position to do that. Only the Mayor can. So could I ask him what's changed between that council meeting and the time he wrote to them? And bearing in mind that, as I understand it, we are the first major city to uh, close the Kingdom contract down, there has been a small council. Uh, will he be taking that information out to other councils and then explaining why to other council leaders uh, with a view to helping them with the legal complications which might arise from such a uh, move? Okay. Um, I'll answer that question first. Um,
it does prove the value again of having the federal funds to make local councils, to make local initiatives um, in keeping the local needs. And I know there were some councils who didn't share that view, not having a deal, but in the day is a, is a, a prime example of responding to that. In, um, in regards to the uh, Kingdom contract, I, I, can I say as, our, as the constructive opposition, I think the council is absolutely right to take that initiative. And if we would never have learned from the experience if we hadn't made that move. Um, before Kingdom came in, we did have um, a very uh, limp response to prosecutions. And uh, I think the most important issue is not whether the prosecutions for flight ticket and other abuse on environmental crime is done by council employees and agency, is actually knowing that that is going to be followed through irrespective of who provides the service. And I was wondering maybe the Mayor would like to last comment. Uh, we've had the great pleasure this week of meeting some of the enforcement officers the council is taking on. So that, that need to prosecute those people who cause undue health and fire risks to the rest of the community is followed through, which is actually more important than who provides service from my point of view, and I'll say that up front. And then lastly, um, in regards to passing comments on to other authorities, I welcome the immense caution because we don't want to get ourselves into litigation damages by passing ad hoc comments because it's a, a quick, cheap uh, drive. I, mean, I think the mayor is quite cautious. We shouldn't be passing comment on we are winding up a commercial contract, uh, but ourselves in education and uh, protection of that damages. Yeah, thank you uh, for comments, uh, Councillor. I've got a comments more than a, a question, but you're absolutely uh, right. That's the reason why we won't leave it, it? We just do what, what we can for our. Uh, hope, hope you'd be absolutely right that it was right to try it. You know, this is not a condemnation of anybody or, or whatever. With resources tight uh, and the need to keep our city clean, uh, if we were right to explore it. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that the profits that were made were able to be put out into communities, into areas, the alley cleaning and stuff. However, you know, there, there were deep concerns and uh, I have to say, um, ethical issues for me about how um, the concentration was in one part of the city and not the other. But I'm not going to go into that other than to say that we've made uh, the right decision. But it won't mean, it won't mean that we'll let up because we will be working with our unions, we'll be working with our trade unions to actually look at how we respond to the desperate need to keep our city clean and, and, and in part of the city I was up in in, in, in Blackfield today and, and you know seeing couches and, and, and stuff dumped when all we've got to do is pick up the phone and it'll get removed. And so it's deeply frustrating when people do that. We've got to also stop um, people allowing foul on the streets, especially in Liverpool. <coughs> and a great example of how the community come together and work with the council was the Anfield Valley Angels which I went and visited. Uh, on uh, Monday of, of, of this week, uh, which seen the great work that they've done, the great work that they do in transforming uh, properties uh, near the Rugby football ground and actually, uh, uh, if you like, eliminating the rat infestation as well because of what they've done. So there are things that we can do. We'll work with the trade unions, we'll consult with them, we'll talk to them about how we improve uh, the services. Um, just one thing in terms of an, an, an announcement, I was actually up at Newton Road um, on, I think that was on Monday, <coughs> uh, to receive a cheque for Zoe's place from our trade unions who work on street collection to actually take uh, cookers, um, fridges, uh, and take them to be recycled and to be scrapped. And the money that they get from that, they plough back into charity and we gave the donations to Zoe's place of £20,000. So, well done to our, our workforce and our community. <laughs> so, 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 so,
the answer with an out world count has had been was with Liverpool FC. And we raised the issue of the kickoff being at 11 o'clock. And we asked them if they really approach the PFA again and asked at the time he put back. And when we went back, he said that the answer would be given was well, the match was a kickoff at 12 o'clock. The, um, the answers from the group celebration were 11 o'clock. And the PFA thought that there would be time between them. But the main obstacle to it wasn't the PFA, all the clubs, the club was very supportive. The main obstacle was they've got a contract with BT, and it was BT who insisted on the time being there, uh, you know, at that time because they publicised it. So I'd like to say that we put more emphasis on British Telecom, and it's them who insisted. And also, PFA, if they don't know how long it takes to get people in and out of cities and out of football grounds, then they shouldn't be in a position to take it. And the second point I'd like to say is on the question of refuse. I've spoken to the a lot of them get to the this morning. Um, the refuse dumping and the various activities that are going on have led to around 15 to 20 tonne of rubbish being dumped at a particular pace in Everton uh, World. I've spoken to the uh, environment, I suppose, person giving notes, I've spoken to the world mayor on the head of the mayor That is so bad, it's eight foot high. And the two departments in the council have been discussing whose responsibility it is. I don't think we should be discussing the responsibility, we should be moving it and then finding out the project you've ever done. But then people, how none of them are being down over the phone uh, bonfire night with the amount of infallible materials that's there is beyond belief. And I'd like to thank you there for taking the interest and getting that on the way. Yeah, I, I, I think the, uh, the comments um, Council Fleming asked about, about the FA, that I said we, we, we have uh, written to them and we will uh, raise it. It shows, it, if you like, in some senses, the disconnect between the powers of who, who run football and us, you know, today we're talking about a £5 million uh, payoff to uh, British School um, uh, £250,000 by each Premier League club. Uh, when you know we've got fans outside our football grounds collecting food for people who can't make ends meet, and, and so my suggestion is is that the money uh, should be given to them, but immediately taken back to set up a football trust, the grassroots football trust, to help young people in poverty, young people who can't afford football boots and playing football in cities like Liverpool. So that's the, the thing. But it does show the disaffection between the powers that be and ordinary people. And I think that's, uh, that's something. I also just want to kind of remind me, um, just to say, I, I tweeted today with Alice Bennett, with uh, Councillor Gladden, Roy Gladden, and uh, Ian Francis, who's our, our lead for the armed forces. And we paid tribute to Bob Blackyard today. But we were in the uh, Veterans HQ, where they referred to a, a wonderful piece of, of uh, decor, a monument to um, 47 um, young soldiers who lost their lives during the uh, First World War and they were from Tiger Street School. Uh, and it's an amazing uh, job that they've done in bringing it back into use. So we're going to put it on display next week at the town hall. And it reminded me really that, that they were 47 uh, young lives lost in, in that war from one school. So imagine what, 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 what it would look like with all of our schools across the city and the region, how many people lost their lives. So it was quite a moving, and thanks to Councillor Gladden for inviting me today, but it was quite a moving experience uh, with our Hedison's champion to be there, to look at the restored piece of the memorial, but also to pay tribute to those uh, that the veterans that actually be fair is this so again welcome to everybody concerned. Thank you for that. Um, changes in committee membership and appointments to outside bodies. Councilman Rasmussen. Yes, I move for changes in committee memberships and Is it on now? Yep. Just testing. And I move for changes in committee memberships and appointments to outside bodies. As attached to this note for the pendant saying, we approve, please. That agreed. Okay. I have some seven nominations. Sorry, what they Can I also mention the Housing Committee? We hope to set that up for January. 
we will be putting names forward and from the names that go forward that will make up that committee we will choose the chair from that and that will be from the lady group that will make that decision. Thank you. Also Rappers, uh, just, just a question. Just a question my Lord Mayor. Um, it doesn't appear on appendix uh, A. Um, have, have you delineated the, the representation on the for that new housing committee or was that done the issue? Okay. Okay, is that agreed? Okay. I see seven nominations of the local policy representative representatives of government council of money. Yes, I'm there, thank you. Sorry. You move the recommendation. Oh, sorry, Lord Mayor. Can I move those changes, please, as in the appendix? Thank you. Is that agreed? Thank you. Now we're going to motions. Can I remind members in terms of the time of the speeches and the movement of motions gets five minutes and has the right to reply five minutes? All of the speakers, three minutes and two minutes for extensions if agreed by the council. Also, that can I remind members to please indicate clearly if they wish to speak on a political particular motion or amendment to enable me to make a note of the list of speakers. So, Drayton Point Campaign by Mayor Anderson. Yes, I'm inviting him, which is said to yeah, He's still looking for a vote. But, is there a second death? Uh, yes. Okay, second death. Yes, and can I uh, inform you that Angela, it'll be Angela Coleman's, as indicated, she wishes to speak on this, and that will be her first speech. Okay. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, I shall uh, be uh, very brief, but I think it's important that I would ask um, uh, in particular uh, opposition councillors, but other people that are here uh, in the chamber, uh, just to make that make a note of some of the, the comments uh, that I'm going to be making, which are just basically factual, because we are seeing today, of course, the great debates about Brexit and, and what's going to happen. Um, and whether uh, people resign or whether anything's happened since uh, I, I left up this big debate that I'm going to agree a deal or have a uh, no Brexit uh, deal. It matters because it will be uh, hugely influential uh, in what we do moving forward as a city, not just this city but others, because I'm absolutely convinced that we will suffer uh, seriously in terms of if we, we end up with a, a no deal. But I received the latest figures ahead of our December uh, local government's uh, settlement figure. You have heard the budget announcements um, 10 days ago, it seems a lot longer than that. Um, and there's absolutely nothing in it for, uh, for Liverpool, nothing at all. And no uh, decisions have been made. You see um, 400 and um, 40 million being given to uh, local government for uh, loan repairs, potholes. Uh, we're talking about 1.8 million for Liverpool, um, and you know we've got probably around about 400 million pounds worth of uh, repairs and potholes needed in the city. So this just gives you an example of how the government is playing um, smoke and business with the funding. Yesterday is, uh, there is an increase uh, in public sector funding. Now about 68% uh, of that goes on, on the National Health Service and on, on the things. So in terms of the local government, it means uh, very little. Uh, in terms of normal uplift, the local government is all to deal with the issues and the problems that we face. And of course we'll wait for, for the uh, first week, hopefully in December, when we'll get our announcement uh, in terms of how uh, we'll actually manage our adult social care uh, moving forward and whether we get uh, a similar um, a, a opportunity with preset and stuff like that before uh, moving forward. Just, well, 
I got these figures from our uh, direct and finance uh, today, and it was just important, I think, that just people sort of, some, sometimes we forget about them, it's just reflected uh, on, on where we are when we hear um, the Prime Minister saying uh, things like austerity is over um, and that, you know, the, uh, the country has made tough choices, but austerity is over. As you know, uh, we set a three-year budget and lead up to 2020, we've already had uh, an indication of what uh, our local government grant fund will be. So we've set aside a three-year budget. We've got uh, another round of 15 months uh, to go, but we're about £37 million pounds short of the savings that we've got to make. Uh, between now uh, and April um, 2020. But I just thought it was important just to give some figures. In 2010, we used to receive um, £523 million pound in, in funding, and today it is £246 uh, million uh, pound in funding. That's a 60 percent reduction. So it's important that, and these aren't my figures, that there are all financial uh, departments figures. But just again to talk to you uh, and remind you that uh, our social care, our social care budget is, is somewhere around about 65 percent of what we, money we get in we have to spend around about 65% of that money we get in for both adults and children's social care. So you can see that the rest of the money that looks after the streets uh, and the libraries and the children's centres uh, and our street lighting and all of the things that we, we have to do it is made up of the, the rest of that 35%, 65% uh, is actually spent on uh, social care. So it's just important uh, when uh, people get excited um, and think that austerity is, is over because it isn't, and it's certainly not for us. So that's why the debate and the motion, which is backed by the LDA but backed by core cities um, across the country, it is saying that councils are seriously at breaking point. There is no uh, flexible uh, flexibility within that. And again, uh, just to uh, remind people that in 2010, we used to have around about £127 million pound in reserves. Today, that is around about £17 million pound in reserves. And we've been supporting that on social care and children's services uh, for uh, the last four or five years using reserves, uh, adult social care to the tune of around about £30 million a year. And perversely, when we look at where we are and, and what, we're, what we're up to and what we're having to deal with, with regards to a city, and I'm sure uh, my cabinet colleague, uh, Councillor Barry Cushman, will tell you about children's social care. Because we allocated uh, around about £7 million pound to uplift children's <coughs> social services. But the budget presses on us for an additional £7 million. So in total, £14 million pound more being spent this year than what we did last year. 